Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our GLAM panel. Before we start, I just have two announcements to make. First of all, please extensively make use of our Etherpad to take notes. And the second one is directed at our audience at home or wherever you are. If you have any questions, you can also uh, write them into the Etherpad and our room angels will keep track of them. So we decided that for this year's panel, after seeing all the, all the contributions that were made, uh, we would focus on the role of Wikidata within data ecosystems that go beyond the actual Wikimedia projects, which is also absolutely in line with the new Wikimedia Foundation uh, strategy. And we have today four panelists, three plus one. So I would like to ask you on stage so I can introduce you. <clears throat> so we have Susanna Onas. She's a long time free knowledge activist involved in many wiki projects. And she will be reporting today on a project in cooperation with, Finni with the Finnish National Library. Then we have next to me Mike Dickison, who will be second uh, in this order. He is a museum curator from New Zealand, a zoologist, and a Wikipedia editor. And he was New Zealand's first Wikipedian at large in 2018 and 2019 and he will tell us about his experience in that role and what what kind of role uh, Wikidata started to play in that context. Then we have Joachim Neubert from the Leibniz Information Center for Economics in Kiel and Hamburg. He has been working on making the largest public press archives worldwide more accessible to the public and he's using Wikidata to do that. And then I will go last. My name is Beat Esterman. I work for Bern University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland and I've been a long time promoter of Open Glam in, in Switzerland and elsewhere and I will today report about my activities in connection with a mandate from the Canadian Arts Presenting Association focusing on performing arts, not primarily on Wikidata, but you will see Wikidata is starting to play a role there as well. So now most of us will take our seat here and I will give the floor to Susanna. Okay. So hello, my name is Susanna Ones and I I work part-time for Wikimedia Finland as a GLAM coordinator, and I also do uh, consulting in the open knowledge sphere. And this, is, this falls maybe rather to the latter. So I have been involved in the workings of a geographic, uh, geogra geographic data uh, group of the, of the, well, I looked it up, what it is in English, but Cultural Heritage Initiative of the Finnish uh, government. So um, this, is, um, this is about place names and how they are um, represented in different uh, repositories uh, in the GLAM sector in Finland and how they are trying to pull together these different sources and how they are informed by uh, modeling in Wikidata and elsewhere. So here we see um, the three main sources for, for this YSO places, which um, is part of the national ontology, general ontology. AHA is for Finnish archives, Melinda is for Finnish libraries, and Kokos is for Finnish museums. So, so there are three uh, also content, content management systems that come together in this YSO places. And um, uh, there are exchanges between Wikidata already taking place, as well as uh, the NAMES uh, project for the National Land Survey. And then there's a third project, uh, the Finnish NAMES Archive, 
which also which doesn't yet contribute to this this but uh, there are plans for that so the, um, one of the key modeling issues in this whole um, problem area is that um, there are three types of elements in place names uh, represented in these projects. One of them is the place, the one that has location, and one of this, them is the place name, the toponym, for example. And then there are sources, which are uh, documents from which these both can be derived from or like backed up with. The YSO places, here you, on the top right, you will see the, the, the same diagram again, that focuses mainly on the places. And the, the maintainer of this, uh, this is the Finnish National Library and the Finto, um, Finto project. Uh, there are now 7,000, more than 7,000 places in Finnish and Swedish, and uh, over 3,000 in English, and they are CC0 wave license wave. So here you can see the service of Finto and uh, a place. This, I chose the Seveti Järvi. It is, it is now also related to our language project with Skolt Sami. This is a place uh, in the very north of Finland um, uh, inhabited by, by Skolt Sami. So um, here you can see the place which belongs to the, well, you will see the, see the, the data about this place. Uh, you can see that it uh, is connected to uh, Wikidata as well as this uh, national land survey data. Here we go. And uh, you will see this mo in more detail here. And it is also uh, uh, hierarchically arranged in, inside this, this uh, repository so that, um, well, actually the, the, the actual place is not seen, but it is uh, underneath this, um, this municipality as well as then the region and Finland as a country and Nordic countries, the, the, like the broader region. Mm -hmm. Here you can see that many of these have been matched with, with Wikidata previously uh, through mix and match, and there are still remaining ones. But the, the amount of uh, uh, names is not that high. It's only less than 5,000. So then there is this other repository by the um, Finnish Geospatial Platform Project, place name cards. These are all the place names that are on Finnish maps. Yeah, and they have uh, linked data, uh, the, which is a license CC by 4.0. Uh, 4 800,000 map labels um, in Finnish, Swedish, and all those three Sami languages that are in Finland. And they have two different types of entities. The other ones are places, and the other ones are place names, toponyms. And they both have persistent URIs. Here's, for example, the same Sevetiarvi in first Finnish, and then all those three Sami languages, as well as the geographic data, and then there is more information about that, like the <clears throat> place type, etc. And here is the, the card for the place name, the toponym, having its own, own URI. I'm sorry, we, it seems that it's not translated into uh, English, this, uh, so multilingualism is not, not um, like covering the whole project. Okay, so we come to the Finnish Names Archive. This is a project by the um, Institute for the Languages of Finland. And uh, this represents not the places, not the place names, but they are actually sources for those. So these are uh, three million field notes of place names, um, and it is a Wikibase project. It, they are in a Wikibase, mainly in Finnish, some in Swedish, uh, an outstanding collection of Sami names, uh, which we are very interested in, and they are li licensed CC by and that is also a challenge from the wiki data point of view, but if there was a Finnish local wiki base, we might be able to first work on them in that, that project. So here's a screenshot of that, uh, showing that there, there's information about the place and uh, maps and old maps, the, the, the maps that the collectors initially used, and the card that they produced of the, of the information they collected. So here's, um, here's uh, one, one of those cards broken down into di data that is included in them. 
So um, then there's uh, this uh, linked data project by uh, the Helsinki uh, Digital Humanities Lab and the Semantic Computers, Computing Group of Alto um, University, the same, uh, and together with this uh, uh, Institute for the Languages of Finland, the name sample. And th this is an aggregate, aggregated research interface to several place name sources. Here you can see that, that the, the many of the sources are there on the left, and then you can make different kinds of visualizations based on this data. And uh, yeah. So, um, so I've been bringing up this idea of like modeling for local Wikibase that we, we could do with this data. But we have, then we enter these uh, modeling questions. How do we model? There are different ways, di different uh, traditions in each of these. So, um, yeah. And uh, the, the, the good thing about it is it could also serve minority languages with, with very little effort. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have the two basic options. The SAPA model, which is the Finnish uh, space-time ontology, um, and the Wikidata model. Here you can see that Wikidata items tend to, well, ideally remain the same with, uh, with uh, changing properties, whereas in the SAPA model these, uh, these items become new when there is a change such as area change or name change. So um, here come back to this, this uh, division between these two, uh, three different uh, um, like dimensions of places, place names. So, should we make these place names into entities or properties? Wikidata uses properties whereas this land survey project has entities. Or should we make them into lexemes? Wikidata has chosen to work with uh, properties for, and like textual properties for, for place names over lexemes. Oh, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> so, uh, they, the names are. Uh, uh, properties, not lexemes. Right. And uh, the, maybe the shortcoming of the Wikibase is the lack of geographical shapes inside that, or like, um, like in the setup, basic setup of it. So one would have to add more technology into the stack to be able to to use uh, local sh geographic shapes. And the federation is really needed to be able to, to take advantage of uh, the Wikidata uh, data corpus. So I think I'm done already. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Kia ora koutou katoa. Welcome everyone. My name is Mike Dickerson um, and for a year I was New Zealand Wikipedian at large. Now you might wonder what a Wikipedian at large is uh, because if you actually look at it for it there is no such thing as we can see. Uh, it's a term that I made up in the grant proposal um, which the foundation seemed to like very much. Uh, and so we ran with it. So for a year I went through 35 different institutions, um, residents in most of them, running uh, training sessions, organising public events, and trying to develop a Wikimedia strategy for each one. Uh, it was a very interesting experience and you encounter a wide range of different projects and people, and I wanted to try and talk through some of the different projects that dealt with Wikidata uh, in interesting or uh, um, perhaps illuminating ways that might be useful for folks to discuss. The project was initially a Wikipedia project by the name, simply because that was what people were familiar with, um, and so we organised multiple different events, very traditional um, editathons, um, gender gap work and so forth. Uh, and a bunch of successful, oh, there's Siobhan there, um, and a bunch of very successful um, new editors recruited and so forth. Uh, we did bulk uploads into Commons. Um, in this case, there were a collection of over a thousand original artworks by 
uh, a, a, an entomological illustrator, Des Helmore, which had been sitting on a hard drive at Lancare Research for 10 years, and we were able to get clearance to release those all under a CC BY license. So, um, you know, easy wins to show to people there. Everyone can understand lots of pictures of beetles. Everyone can understand a workshop devoted to in, um, fixing the gender gap. But Wikidata is a much more difficult sell to people in the glam sector or anyone outside of our particular movement. So I began to realise that Wikidata was going to be a more and more important part of the um, Wikipedian at large project. So uh, as we went through, it became a larger and larger component of what I was doing. And I began to try and teach myself more about Wikidata as well. Uh, because I was beginning to see how important it was. So here's one project. The kākāpō is a native New Zealand flightless parrot. Um, we worked with the Department of Conservation, whose job is to save this species from extinction, and pitched the idea, what if we put every single kākāpō into Wikidata? Um, and that may seem ridiculous, but it's actually a perfectly doable project. Uh, there are some, a few of them are in there already. A key thing to note is there are not many kākāpō, so it's a manageable task. There are 148 when I started, and then one died, uh, and they've just had a great breeding season and up to 213. This is great. This is the most kākāpō there have been for over 50 years. So it's, uh, this was also a big deal. This is on the news every day in New Zealand, um, each new one that was born. Hmm? the New York Times. Did it? Oh, lovely. Yeah, this was national news, so everyone loves these birds. Uh, but something interesting about them is because, uh, unlike species that are more populous, every single kākāpō is named, has a unique name and a unique ID number, and often has good biographical data about where and when they were born, they hatched, who their father and mother was, when they died, if they died. So there is, in fact, a Department of Conservation database of all of this information. And one of the most famous kākāpō, of course, is Sirocco, who you can see is named after a wind, was born there. Sirocco has um, a Twitter account, um, which Wikidata has some problems with, because apparently birds can't have Twitter accounts. I don't know about that. Um, is even featured on an album cover and so forth. So there are multiple properties of this, the, probably the most famous individual kākāpō. So I pitched to Department of Conservation, why don't we try and do this with every single one? And so they had to think about how much of the biographical data could be made public, and they came up with a short list. And now we've got, I think, 212, 210, I think a couple died, uh, living kākāpō, that uh, all candidates now, and they only get a name when they fledge. They have a code number until that, while they're still babies. So when we've got the full fresh crop, we're going to create um, a complete Wikidata. The entire species will be in Wikidata. But we need to come up with a property for doc ID. I actually would like to chat with folks about that. Should we be using a very specific ID, or should we be coming up with an ID that would work for all individual birds or plants or animals that have been tagged um, in any scientific research project? It's a good question. Uh, second project was Christchurch Art Gallery. Uh, there are very few paintings of Colin McCarr, New Zealand's most famous artist, in existence. This is a drawing he did for the New Zealand School Journal, which was government funded at the time, so it's actually in Archives New Zealand, who own the copyright for it. This is a very unusual situation. So I worked with Christchurch Art Gallery, who, along with Auckland Art Gallery, maintain a site uh, called Fine New Zealand Artists, uh, the job of which is to keep track of the holdings, every institution that has holdings of a New Zealand artist. So about 18,000 um, different artists in their database, so most with very little information at all. Uh, so we did a standard sort of mix and match. Uh, we did an export of the ones that had at least a birth date or a death date or a place of birth, or a place of death. So that's not restricting it very much. And even then we were able not able to match quite a few, but so we've got about 1,500 now that's uh, matched to know an artist in Wikidata, which is nice. But what was appealing to them is that this is their website, which really just is, maintains the holdings uh, links there, 
But there's biographical data which they had to create, they create by hand currently for every single artist. And the act of exporting and putting into mix and match exposed numerous typos and mistakes and such like that they hadn't noticed. And it's only when you start running <laughs> things through Excel that these things show up. And the value of Wikidata was suddenly conveyed to them when I said, you know, you could just suck in all that information from Wikidata. And that, was, that made them sit up straight. So this, I think, is one of the selling points, is that when you have this carefully hand-curated website with 18,000 entries full of mistakes and tell them there's another way that they could get other people to do some of this fact-checking and correction for them, that's when it sinks home. And they were now was pitching the idea that they wikidatify this entire history book of New Zealand artists in Christchurch in the 30s um, and run through, just published, and run through every single person, connection, place, exhibition, and so forth. There's a manageable sized project, and they're very excited by this. And thirdly, I wanted to show you Māori subject headings. A waka is a Māori name for a particular kind of canoe, a war canoe. So the, in, in the National Library of New Zealand, there's a listing for waka because the National Library actually has its own dictionary of Māori subject headings in the Māori language. So there it defines waka um, and in Māori and English. But it also has a whole lot of narrower terms you can see down the side there. A typical one would be taurapa, and a definition first in Māori and then in English. It's the carved stern post that you can see there. In the English, you would say stern post, but you can't use the word stern post for taurapa because taurapa only works for particular kinds of, of war canoes. So there is no English word equivalent for that. And I suddenly realised that here is an entire ontology of cultural specific terms that have been very carefully worked out and verified by the National Library with Māori uh, constantly being added to and improved uh, with definitions, with descriptions in both English and Māori. Really exciting, I suddenly thought we could put this whole lot into Wikidata, Māori first, and then translate it into English as required. Be a nice change, wouldn't it? And here's the copyright licensing, unfortunately. Non-commercial, no derivatives. So now I have to start the conversation with them about why did they pick that license? Um, and possibly because they only got, got buy-in from Māori who agreed to sit down and vet all this stuff if there was a guarantee that none of this information could be used for commercial purposes. So that's one of the frustrating aspects of the talk, of the, the task, is coming up against these sorts of restrictions. So those are the three things I wanted to put out in front as sparking discussion. Putting an entire species into Wikidata, what it takes to actually change an art gallery's curator's mind about the value of Wikidata, and what do we do when we would see a complete ontology in another language that unfortunately has been slapped with a restrictive Creative Commons license. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joachim Neubert. I'm working for the ZBW uh, Leibniz Information Center for Economics in Hamburg as a scientific software developer. And uh, one of my tasks in the last year was preparing a data donation to Wikidata. And I want to give some report on this uh, on our first experiences from donating uh, metadata from the 20th century press archive. To our best knowledge, this is the largest public press archive in the world. Uh, it has been collected between 1908 and 2005 uh, and has been uh, got from, from more than 1,500 newspapers and periodicals from Germany and also uh, internationally. And it had covered everything which could be of interest uh, for uh, the, the, Hamburg, um, uh, the Hamburg business people who, are, who wanted to expand uh, over the world. As you can see, 
Uh, this material has uh, been clipped from newspapers and uh, put onto paper and then uh, collected in folders. Like uh, here you see a small corner of the person's archive and uh, similarly uh, information has been collected on companies, on uh, general topics, on wares, on everybody, what, uh, on uh, everything uh, which could be interesting. These folders uh, have been scanned up to roughly 1949 uh, by a DFG-funded project uh, in 2004 to 2007. And the result are uh, up to now 25,000 thematic dossiers uh, of this time. These contain about two million or more than two million pages and uh, these are online on a, with an application developed at that time uh, by ZBW, which now looks a bit uh, outdated, not so fancy and what's a, more of a problem, it's an application which is built uh, architecturally on, on Oracle, it was built on, uh, it's built on um, Cold Fusion, it runs on Windows servers, so it's not uh, very sustainable in the long term. And we have discussed, should we migrate this to a more fancy uh, linked data application, uh, or should we take a, a radical step and put all this data uh, in the open, uh, we have assigned a CC0 license to that data and are currently uh, moving the main uh, access layer, the main discovery layer, and uh, the, the primary access layer uh, to the open linked data web, where it uh, factually uh, makes most sense to put uh, some the metadata into Wikidata and to make sure that all folders uh, of the collections are linked to Wikidata so they are findable and that all metadata ab about these folders uh, is also transferred to Wikidata so it can be used there and it could be, can be enriched there possibly uh, corrections can be made to that data. What st is still maintained by ZPW is of course the storage of the, the images which are, we can't put on, on uh, in any way um, or we can, can't give a license on that because this is owned by the uh, original creators. Uh, but we make sure that they are accessible uh, by uh, some again, metadata files in, for DFG viewer or in, in the future by IIIF manifests. And we will prepare some static landing pages uh, which will serve as a, as a data point of reference for Wikidata as well as uh, uh, still making available data which doesn't fit well into Wikidata. For this migration and data donation uh, to Wikidata, we set up a custom uh, infrastructure of, of uh, a Sparkle endpoint with that data. Uh, and we basically used federated queries uh, between that endpoint and the Wikidata query service to create according uh, statements through either uh, concatenated in, in Sparkle queries themselves or uh, transformed via a script, which also generated references for the statements and then uh, put it into uh, quick statements. All the code we used there is uh, online. So this is what we get. It's not only simple things like birth dates, but, sorry, uh, but also uh, complex 
uh, statements about already existing uh, already existing items like uh, this person was a supervisory board member of said company and uh, during a, a period of time and uh, referenced uh, for for uh, use in uh, in uh, yes, scientific context. The first part of this data donation has been finished. Uh, the person's archive is completely linked to Wikidata and uh, there, this also adds information to a lot of items which has been for, uh, before not had any external references and we had at, uh, about more than 6,000 statements which are now sourced in the uh, press archives metadata. Well, uh, this was a mostly easy part uh, because persons are easily identifiable in Wikidata. Uh, more than 90% were already existed there, so we could link to that. Uh, we created some some hundred uh, items for these, for the ones where, which were missing. But now, it uh, we are working on uh, the, the rest of the archive, particularly on the topics archive, uh, which means mapping a, a historic system for the organization of knowledge about rather the whole world, materialized as newspaper clippings, to Wikidata. To give you a basic idea, uh, the uh, Countries and Topics Archive is organized uh, by a hierarchy of uh, countries and other geographic entities, which is uh, translated to English, which makes it more easy, and uh, a German uh, deeply nested, deeply nested classification of, of topics. And this combination defines uh, one, one uh, folder. So what we now uh, want to do is to map, to map this as a structure to Wikidata and to bring the data in. And uh, I want to invite you to join this, uh, this really nice challenge in terms of knowledge organization. There's a wiki project where this work is tracked and you can uh, follow this or participate in this. And yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> so we're taking performing arts to Wikidata. Uh, we're taking performing arts to the linked open data cloud by building a linked open data ecosystem for the performing arts. And the question I'm trying to answer, and I hope you will kind of help me answering the question, is which place for Wikidata I know that. But let me f uh, first start with my experiences, which I made this year, uh, in the first half of the year, when I was had the pleasure to work with uh, KEPACOA, which is the Canadian Arts Presenting Association, which actually launched a project called Linked Digital Future Initiative uh, to actually get the entire art sector in Canada to embrace linked open data. And they did that based on the observation that over the past five years, the an immensely important topic within performing arts was the fact that uh, metadata was not around in sufficient quality and not uh, interlinked, not interoperable. And that's also why some of the performances, some of the events were, are not so well findable by Google and by personal uh, computer-based assistants and so on. So this, the, the vision we kind of developed together uh, is that we want to have a knowledge base uh, 
for many stakeholders at once. So we looked at the entire performing arts value network. We identified key stakeholders in there. We looked at the usage scenarios they would like to pursue. And we kind of mapped it uh, to, uh, to the whole architecture uh, of, of such a uh, knowledge base or of the different platforms in there, uh, which obviously is a distributed architecture and not one big monolith. I'm just going to run through that quite quickly because we have uh, 10 minutes each, uh, so, but uh, I think we'll have uh, plenty of time tonight or tomorrow to deepen that if anybody's interested in, in the details. So we started from that Performing Arts Value Network, which interestingly was just published uh, last year, so we're lucky to be able to to build on uh, previous work, like you have the primary value chain of the performing arts in the middle and uh, various uh, stakeholders around that. All in all, we identified 20 stakeholder groups, which then we kind of boiled down into seven larger categories. For each of the stakeholder groups, we kind of um, formulated what kind of needs they would have in terms of such a an infrastructure and what would they be able to achieve if the whole thing was uh, interlinked and uh, the data was actually publicly accessible. Uh, so you can see the types here, the different uh, types is production, then presentation and promotion, coverage and reuse, live audiences, online consumption, heritage, research and education. And after kind of setting up a big table of which you can see just the first part here, uh, we kind of compared or had a look at which type of data were actually used across the board by all different um, groups of, of uh, stakeholders. And there's quite a large basis of data that is common to all of them. And that really is the area where it, it makes a lot of sense to actually uh, cooperate and to keep that, uh, to maintain that data uh, together. So when talking about uh, the platform architecture, you can see that uh, we have like four layers here. At the bottom, displayed the data layer. Of course, Wikidata plays a part in it, but also a lot of other databases, distributed databases that are uh, that, that kind of expose data through Sparkle endpoints. In the the yellow part in the middle, that's the semantic layer. It's our common language to describe our things, to make statements about things uh, around the performing arts, the ontology. Then we have an application layer that consists of uh, various modules, for example, for data analysis, for data extraction, so how do you actually get non-structured data into structured data? How, how can we support that by, by tools? Then obviously also visualization of data. As soon as you have large quantities of data, you want to visualize it in some way. And on the top, you have the presentation layer. That's what the ordinary people are actually interacting with on a daily basis. It's search engines, it's encyclopedias, cultural agendas, and a variety of other services. We're not starting from scratch. Some work has already been done in this area. I'm just uh, citing a few examples from projects which I had been involved in. There's some other stuff going on as well. Uh, so I started in this area with the Swiss Archives for the Performing Arts and they're building a Swiss Performing Arts database. We created a, a Performing Arts ontology that's currently being implemented into RDF and they already have a database of like 60, 70 years of, of performance history in Switzerland. So that's something they can build on, and that's something that's being transformed into RDF. And they will also build a platform where this data can be accessed. Then we have done several ingests into Wikidata, partly from Switzerland, partly also from the Flanders Arts uh, Institute. Uh, for example, Bart Magnus was involved in that. Uh, it was a driving force behind that. There's also stuff on Wikimedia Commons, but not very well interlinked with all the rest of our metadata. And obviously, by doing these uh, ingests, we also kind of started to implement parts of the Swiss data model into Wikidata. 
then one of the Canadian implementation partners is Culture Creates. They're running a platform that actually scrapes information from uh, theater websites and inputs it into a knowledge graph uh, to then expose it to search engines and, and other uh, search devices. Uh, and there again, we kind of had to implement and extend uh, this in ontology. And as you can see from the slide is that there are still many empty spaces, but there's also some overlap, and an important overlap obviously is the common shared language, which will help us actually interlink uh, the various uh, data sets. Uh, what is also important, obviously, is that we are using the same base registers and authority files, and it's also a place where uh, Wikidata uh, plays an important role by kind of interlinking these. Now, I'd like to share the recommendations by the Link Data Future Initiatives uh, Advisory Committee, uh, at least the two first recommendations. So, for the Canadians, now it's absolutely crucial to kind of fill in their own Canadian performing arts knowledge graph, because unlike the Swiss archives for the performing arts, they're not starting with an already existing database, but they, they're kind of creating it from scratch. And that's absolutely crucial to have data in there. And second, as you can see, uh, comes in already Wikidata. Wikidata, by the, the advisory committee, has been seen as complementary to artsdata.ca, this, this knowledge graph, and therefore efforts should be undertaken to contribute to its population with performing arts related data. And that's what we're going to work on over the coming months and years. And that's also why I'm kind of on the lookout here to see who else will join that, uh, that effort. So right now, um, obviously, we're saying they are complementary. So we have to think about what are the pluses and the minuses of each of the approaches. And you can see here a comparison between Wikidata and the classical linked open data. Uh, approach, and um, I will be happy to discuss that further with you guys, how, how your experiences are in there. Uh, but as I see it, like Wikidata has a huge plus because it's a crowdsourcing platform and it's easy to invite further parties to actually contribute. On the, on the negative side, obviously, you get this problem of loss of control. Data owners have to give up control over their graphs, data quality and completeness uh, it, it, it's harder to track on, on Wikidata than if you have it under your control. Another s strength of Wikidata is that it requires immediate integration into that worldwide graph, and you cannot just do it kind of reconcile step by step against other databases, which may also be seen by some as an advantage, but of course if you're Looking for uh, integration and interoperability, Wikidata forces you to go for that from the beginning. And then, obviously, harmonize, harmonizing data modeling practices is, a, is an issue in both cases, but it may seem at the beginning easier to do it just in your own silo because you're, at some point you're done with the task and it will be an ongoing task uh, on Wikidata. So, when now it comes to prioritizing the data to be ingested, that's like the, the rules I, I kind of go by at the moment. Um, first of all, we'd like to ingest data where it's unclear who would be the natural authority of in the given area. So that's definitely data that will be managed in a shared manner. And we'd like to ingest data where we see a high potential for crowdsourcing approaches. We'd like to ingest data where the data is likely to be reused in the context of Wikipedia. And there's also a hope that some part of the international coordination around the whole data modeling about the standardization in this area could actually take place directly on Wikidata if it's not taking place elsewhere, because it kind of forces people to start interacting if they ingest data in the same pot. And we'd like to focus now Next, on base registers and authority files, because they kind of help us create the linkages between different data and on controlled vocabularies as an extension of the existing uh, ontology. 
So just two more slides. Um, the next steps will be that we're taking the sum of all glams approach to Wikilove's performing arts. So that means we're describing venues and organizations and try to push the data to Wikipedia in forms of info boxes and mBubble templates. And the other one, the other projects I'm uh, going to pursue is a cost action uh, that we'll submit next year uh, around that linked open data ecosystem for the performing arts. COST is a European program that supports networking activities and the topics to be covered are listed here. Uh, two of them I have highlighted. Uh, one, is th one of them is like the question of federation between Wikidata and the classical linked open data approaches. And the other one uh, I think is very important also where we have a huge potential still is implementing international campaigns to supplement data on Wikidata. So that's it. Thank you for your for your attention. Now I would like to ask my colleagues up here uh, on to the panel. Maybe we'll get the microphone as well. Yeah. And then I would like to give you the chance to ask questions and obviously also ask my colleagues whether they have questions to each other. So do we have uh, maybe a question from the audience? <laughs> um, I would like to ask from each of you where would you draw the, the, the line basically, how, how you would define when do you need to run your own wiki base and where do you, what do you want to put on Wikidata? Like, is this, is this a clear delineation or what is the thinking behind of putting it here or there? Yeah, I, I can answer first because I have the mic. <laughs> so, so I've been thinking that one of the, one of the uh, issues is uh, notability um, and I'm addressing that in a different project. And um, I think licensing could be one because you can uh, apply your own terms in your own own database and then uh, think wherever it's possible. And then uh, the third one is just to uh, have it as a sandbox, prepare it for ingestion into Wikidata. Well, these are the three main things that I come up with now, but I can come up with more. Uh, for me, rights are always going to be an issue. So if the National Library wanted to move towards Wikibase that would enable them to continue to control the licensing for the work they've done with Māori language terms. Um, the Kākāpō database only contains data that the Department of Conservation felt could be made public, but I suspect if they see it up and running, they might be tempted to use a private Wikibase to maintain their own database, simply because of some of the visualisation tools that could be applied uh, might be better than the sort of Excel spreadsheet system that they, they currently run. Well, I think uh, this very much depends on the kind of data. Uh, we are with the Press Archive, of course, in a, in a quite uh, lucky position in that this was material was, which was published. It was uh, uh, published at a time where it was expensive to publish. Um, so uh, this is quite easy. I think uh, also projects, and this is a, a typical project, so it was funded for some time and then funding ended. Uh, and what happens with the data which is enclosed in some uh, silo and some software which will not run forever. Uh, and so it makes absolutely sense in my eyes uh, at the time, Wikidata wasn't around, but now it is. And it makes absolutely sense for a project to early on discuss sustainability in the context of how could we put this into a larger ecosystem like Wikidata, uh, what is really, and discuss this with the Wikidata community, what is uh, notable and what makes sense to add this to Wikidata and what makes sense to keeps this as a, as a proprietary form, maybe in a 
in a more simple form than a sophisticated application, but make it discoverable and make it linked to the large big data cloud instead of investing lots of money into uh, some, uh, some silo which will not sustain. Yeah, um, as I said before in, in the project I was presenting here, like the duality is between Wikidata and classical linked open data approaches, so it's not so much about setting up a private wiki base. Uh, like one challenge we are having, of course, in, in Wikidata is that when you ingest your own data there, you also have to do some housekeeping uh, of people, of other people actually. <laughs> And that can be that can put off people, or that also means that we we will address that just step by step. Uh, so there will be at the moment a uh, database living uh, in classical linked open data, and we'll start interlinking it with Wikidata, and it's a continuous process to find out uh, for which areas the master data will eventually live on Wikidata, and for which areas it will actually live on other databases. Obviously, we will have uh, challenges reg regarding uh, synchronization, um, as we probably all have across uh, that linked data field, where we still have to negotiate whom we trust, who has authority, uh, about what. Other questions? Thank you. Um, so I fully agree with that issue of uh, finding the where to put the boundary between uh, why do we put data on Wikidata or why do we keep them and um, create, manage, and maintain them in local databases and what for what purposes. And I think that this is a large discussion that goes beyond uh, just the excitement of putting data on Wikidata because it is public, because it serves humanity, because while well, there are two cool tools and things are more complicated in real life, I think. Well, but uh, despite this, the, it's quite an interesting discussion. And then this is another issue also, or another problem that is being discussed in this event in different um, um, panels. It is, uh, on one side, have your own database, whatever the technology is, and publish things on Wikidata, or built your own system of managing, creating and managing information on the wiki-based technology. And then, well, synchronize or whatever, do the federation or things. So it's a matter of technology that is used and uh, the fact that you use Wikidata for just for publishing or the infrastructure that is underneath Wikidata to create and manage your own data. So uh, it's the, the, I mean, we will have, we had the discussion about the Wikibase uh, panel and will there be other discussions here, but things are on different levels, I think. Mm. May uh, maybe shorter react to that discussion mm. about Wikibase right. or Wikidata? I think it's problematic that we are focusing so, focusing so much on this wiki-based infrastructure because there are in other infrastructures, like in, in the area yeah. of performing arts, we'll, we have another complementary community, which is Music Brains, that runs on yeah. their own mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. that provides linked open data, mm -hmm. and where I, as I understand it, there's agreement within the Wikidata community that we are not going to double all their data, we're not going to copy all their data, but we accept that they're complementary. So what will happen when we start integrating this data in Wikipedia, info boxes, for example, 
will we be able to pull that data directly from their Sparkle endpoint? Or would we be obliged to kind of copy over data and what kind of processes are involved there? That so discussions are open, I think, because within this event you have both interest communities, mm -hmm. those that are interested mm -hmm. in Wikibase and those that are interested in Wikidata and those that are interested in both. Yeah, but we're not mm -hmm. going to oblige them to move to Wikibase. Not Music Brains is not running on, no, on Wikibase. No, I just wanted to say that you have <coughs> separate problems, sometimes mm. interrelated, sometimes not completely mm. separated. Mm. That, that's, and I had another uh, question or remark yes. regarding the, the, the management of hierarchies in controlled vocabularies like thesaurus, like uh, you in Finto, uh, you do have your uh, the places uh, in the, the, the Maori uh, uh, subjects, uh, headings, they, well, they have to do with the, the, uh, the, the, the management of concepts in a hierarchy. What is your take, your opinion about the possibility of managing this uh, controlled uh, knowledge organization systems in Wikidata? Well. Um, I think in the case of uh, Finta and Wiseau Places, um, the, the repository will be a collection of several uh, um, sources, e eventually. So it is in flux anyway, so we don't have to necessarily, well, we don't, well, I, I don't represent the National Library, but in that possible project, <coughs> we would not have to maintain uh, an existing or fight with an existing structure. So, in that sense, it is a, an, an area open for exploration. The Maori subject headings seem to lend themselves ideally to a Wikidata structure, but the licensing, of course, forbids that. I suspect that if the licensing were different and they were put into Wikidata, as soon as somebody decided they didn't like the hierarchy and started to change things, there would be an immediate outcry from the people who worked very hard to create that structure and get the sign-off from very various different Māori that those that was the correct hierarchy. So that's an issue to try and resolve. I think in terms of knowledge organization systems, they are all different. And uh, I'm not sure if it would be a good idea to represent different hierarchies in uh, Wikidata as such, but it may, be, may make sense to think about overlays uh, over the, the data. So to do mappings on the concept level, uh, for example, we uh, as a as ZPW publish a thesaurus for economics, and uh, this thesaurus has its own, its own hierarchy, and of course, it would be possible uh, to project the hierarchy of this thesaurus into map Wikidata concepts without actually storing this kind of structure uh, as an alternative structure within Wikidata, which would make, make a lot of confusion. But I think uh, we should think of Wikidata also as a pool of concepts which can be connected uh, on layers which are outside and which give another view of the world uh, which has not necessarily to be uh, uh, in w within Wikidata. Okay, uh, some other questions? Otherwise, okay. Um, Joachim, I just wanted to follow up on that last point. So these layers, uh, as you picture it, um, they would be maintained externally and, um, and somehow integrated, integrated um, with Wikidata from the Wikidata side? Or um, how do you, have you thought a bit further about how that might be managed? Uh, actually, no, I have no, I have done experiments with uh, SDW and, and Wikidata, 
I was cheering the year in Wikidata. Uh, but uh, I think this is a whole new complex uh, thing. And so it's, it's up to uh, SCOS delivers a lot of, of common ground to do such things, uh, but it has to be figured out. Should take one more? Uh, hmm? okay. I was just wondering about the Kakapo project. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, did you get any pushback from the Wikidata community about having like individual animals added as items? Not so far. Has anyone heard about this before? Is it not so far because no one has heard about it yet? There's been, a, there's been a small discussion for quite some time now uh, amongst people interested in this sort of thing in Wikidata and we all seem to think that it's a natural extension of giving individual Wikidata items to a famous racehorse or someone's cat which that, that's modelled pretty well. I guess just the audacious thing is putting the entire species in there. Mm -hmm. But um, I, think, I think it's perfectly manageable. Don't try it with cats and goats. <laughs> Okay, I think the time is finished. Thank you very much for attending. I think the speakers will be still open for questions in the break and have fun. Thank you very much. <laughs>